Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe, we receive right now our daily bread, our fresh manna from heaven. Father, I thank you that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, and that I speak as the oracles of the living God. And the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And they are anointed in Jesus' name. And this word nourishes us. And this word is written on the tablets of our mind and heart. And will never be taken away from us. Praise God. Thank you, Father. You're so good to us. We believe we receive it right now. And we thank you for it. And now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord in my family and over my family, every member of my family in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord over my nation and in our government, and Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Today, Father, I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, that you give me quick understanding of all things, that the eyes of my understanding are enlightened, that I may know and understand this and receive it in Jesus' name. And that this word has free course in my mind and in my heart and grows up and produces a hundredfold. Thank you, Father. I am so grateful to the Lord for the revelation of this and father we just thank you that every person that watches this has the revelation of this parable so that we know how to operate in the kingdom of god and how to receive all of the kingdom of god in jesus name so the parable of the sower and we're doing kind of a quick review before we get into actually planting the seed in our garden but, you know, Jesus said, a sower went out to sow. And then, after he gave the parable, he said to his disciples, unto you, and so he's saying that to you and me now, unto us is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. This is the mystery of the kingdom of God. And he says, and if you understand this parable, you will know all parables. The sower sows the word. In Luke chapter 8, he says the seed is the word of God. So the purpose of the parable is for you and I know how to, uh, how to plant the word of God and get a quick harvest on it in every area of our lives. And that's why he's teaching this to us. You know, a farmer in the natural, he buys a field, but if he doesn't get the stones out, if he doesn't get the thorns out, and if he doesn't till the soil, if he goes out and buys his seed and he throws the seed out there, he has wasted his money and he has wasted his time. So we... Are farmers of the soil of our heart and we don't want to waste our time by not having the soil prepared so we're looking now at the third condition of the soil and so I'll read this to you out of Mark chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 and the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word then the cares and anxieties of the world and the distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. And let me read that out of the King James. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, entering in. That is a key phrase right there. Entering in. Entering in where? Entering into the heart. 
Now get the picture of this because your heart is the soil. But these things, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, are the thorns, he said, that entering in choke the word and the word becomes unfruitful. So we, even though maybe thoughts come, we have control not to allow them to enter in to our heart, even though there may be a temptation there. We, the purpose of this is first of all to get, to pull all the thorns out of our heart, but then also not allow them to come in from that point on. So let's go over to Matthew chapter six, because this is where the Lord took me years and years ago, and he's still taking me back there because I had let some of these things slip and I'd, I had to go back to the foundation of this, to the basics, to the principle of this. But when the Lord spoke to my husband, Frank, and he said, I want you to learn to live by faith and then teach my people to live by faith. And we had no source of income other than the word of God, which we were to learn to live by faith. And we had done produce some things by faith, but we really didn't know how to truly live by faith, that you could actually live every day, every moment of every day with uh, receiving by faith everything that God has supplied for us. So, you know, it was in my heart to do it, but at the same time, there was like a fear there of, oh no, we, we've got to get this, we've got to get, we've got to get be able to believe this stuff in and so I would go over to Philippians 419 to meditate on but my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus and I would start to meditate there and the Lord would tell me no you go over to Matthew 6 and I would say no I've got to meditate I mean I was just carrying on this conversation not even really realizing it was the Holy Spirit but I've got to go, I've got to meditate in Philippians 4, 6, but it was so strong. The Holy Spirit said, no, you need to go to Matthew 6. And he told me that about three or four times. I said, okay, I'm going to Matthew 6. And so um, I went over there and we're going to look at this again because you need it as well as I need it. No man can serve two masters. And if Jesus said, and what he said, he heard his father say. If Jesus said no man can serve two masters, then that includes you and me. You and I cannot serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And we read yesterday out of the Amplified that Mammon was uh, possessions and uh, deceitfulness of riches and, um, and I think even money is in that. You cannot serve both. So you make a decision at that point. What am I going to serve? Am I going to serve God or am I going to serve um, mammon and work for my own things and do it the world's way the choice is ours and it's good to realize that you have a choice because until I read this I didn't know I had a choice but you know I thought I'm, I'm going to go with God I didn't know how to but you know what he taught me and now I am uh, sharing these things with you as well Therefore, I say unto you, this is Jesus talking, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. And you know, it's interesting because those were the very things I was thinking about, about uh, how are we going to get food? How are we going to pay for the water and the utilities how are we going to pay for our house how are we going to clothe the children 
And so those things were in my mind. And so he's, he's very plain here. Take no thought. I think in the Amplified it says take no anxious thought. So he didn't say they wouldn't come. He said don't take them. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Now listen to the truth of this. What he's saying is, is I gave you life. If I gave you life, then I will give you the food. I gave you the body. He said, um, just a minute, I'll, let me find this. Or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. He said, I gave you a body. If I gave you a body, then certainly I can clothe that body. And that's what, that's what his thought is in this. I gave you life, which is far greater in value than food. So if I gave you life, then certainly I'm going to feed you. And I gave you a body. So the body is far greater than clothing. So if I gave you a body, then certainly I can provide and will provide the clothing for the body. Do you see that? I believe, I'm going to say it. I believe you see that. I believe you get it. I believe we all get this revelation. And then he said, well, and I went through that, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, so now he's going to have us. If he says behold, then we're going to behold the fowls of the air, the birds of the air. For they don't sow, they don't reap, and they don't gather into barns. And so I was meditating on that, and I said, okay, wait a minute, let me see what, he, what is he saying here. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't gather into barns. In other words, they don't do anything for their food. They don't sow the seed, they don't uh, reap, they don't gather into barns. He says, and the next statement, so good, yet your heavenly Father, say that, say my heavenly Father, my heavenly Father feeds them. And that was the first time I'd ever seen that, that God actually, every day, He feeds the birds. Isn't that awesome? And then He said, Are you not much better than they? So He's saying, You're better than the birds. I'd, I'd never thought about God feeding the birds. But if he said it, then that's what he does. And see, that's why you base what you believe on the Word of God. So he feeds the birds every day. He said, are you not much better than the birds? So let's think about this. You know, we've had pets through the years. And we would take care of the pets. But you know, our children always came first. I mean, on the forefront of my mind was my children even though we took care of the animals, but I really was made sure my children were taken care of. I mean, breakfast, their lunches, uh, dinner, snacks, that was at the forefront of my mind. So God feeds the birds, and yet you're his child. You are much more valued than the birds. So he says, he will feed you. So here's what our confession is. Our Father feeds us with the best of the land. And I think I might have given you this yesterday, but in Isaiah 1, he says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best, the good of the land. And that's the abundant supply, the best of everything. And um, the obedient part, we are obedient in Christ. Our obedience is in, is in His obedience. I mean, we are in His obedience. So our part is to be willing, to be willing to have to eat the best of the lamb. I remember Brother Hagen saying one time that he went to the Lord 
because they had not had enough money to buy adequate quick clothing and good food and so forth. And he fasted and he went to the Lord and he said, Lord, your word says, if you be willing and obedient, that I will eat the good of the land. And he said, but I've not even been able to adequately supply for my family. And the Lord spoke to him and he said, yes, you've been obedient. But he said, you haven't been willing to have the best and the indication was to have the uh, abundant supply of the best so and, and I'm adding that because the Lord didn't say that to him exactly that way he said you haven't been willing he said I made an adjustment down on the inside of me and he said I said okay Lord I am willing now and he made a decision to be willing to receive from the Lord his abundant supply his best so make that same decision I will have an abundant supply of the best of everything and then he said which of you by taking thought or being anxious taking anxious thoughts can add excuse me one cubit unto his stature and this is the way the Lord spoke it to me which of you, by being anxious, can accomplish anything? And that takes care of every field, every area of your life. And why take you thought for clothing? And you know, this is, this is very special to me because this is where the Lord took me when I asked him. I said, Lord, do you care about clothes? And this is where he took me, so let's let's just receive this revelation again consider he said why take you thought for clothes consider the lilies of the field how they grow they don't toil and they don't spin so I was just meditating on this now this was new to me I, I had not seen this before isn't the word so good and the Holy Spirit is so good to take us to what we need so he said the lilies of the field how they grow he said they don't toil in other words they don't work for their clothes they don't work for their flower and he says and they don't spin and this is what came to me spin oh that he's talking about sewing well I was a seamstress and I made um, I would go see something in a store and then duplicate it and make it for myself and I made many uh, some of the boys clothes but um, a lot of Joy's clothes and so when I saw that I just made a decision I wasn't doing that anymore since my father was going to clothe me then I wasn't gonna have to make my own clothes anymore and that was the last thing I ever made for myself and he said um, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his wealth and splendor was not clothed or arrayed like one of these lilies. Take the time and listen to this and let this sink in to, to your heart and affect you like it has affected me. And he said, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven so let's think about this this is God talking if God so clothed a blade of grass so he's telling us that the lily he clothed a blade of grass which today is tomorrow is gone and he said but yet God took the time to take a blade of grass to clothe it. He said, Shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 
So I go, my father wants to clothe me? Wow. And then I ask the Lord, you know, what? How do you clothe your children? And I've told the Lord, he has to show me in the word. So immediately he took me over to um, Adam and Eve, where they clothed themselves with fig leaves. But he clothed them with a fur coat. So for people that have a problem with furs, God provided the first fur coat. And then he took me over to the story we call the prodigal son, where the father, the good, good father, when the son came home, he says, bring him the best robe. So I go, okay, that's my father. That is God, that is my heavenly father. And he desires to clothe me with the best of the land. And this is the confession he gave me. My father clothes me much more with the best of the land. So let's do that. You do that with me. My father clothes me much more with the best of the land. And let's say this. My father feeds me with the best of the land. And then this is what I confess based on Isaiah 1. And then I think we'll have to close out for today. But uh, this is my confession. I live in the best. I wear the best. I drive the best. I fly the best. I have the best children. I have the be abundant supply of the best of everything. Did I say I wear the best? Well, I eat the best and I wear the best. So abundant supply of the best of everything. Because you know the word says, with our heart we believe, but with our mouth our confession is made unto the promises. So confess that with me right now. Say, in Jesus' name, I eat the best of the land. I eat abundant supply of the best of the land. I wear the best of the land. I drive the best of the land, and I live in the best of the land. I have the best of everything because my Father provides it. And let me lead you in this confession again. My Father clothes me, his daughter, or his son, much more with the best of the land. And you know what? He does. I have compliments on my clothes all the time, and I just say, my father did this. The other night I wore a pair of shoes, and people were just admiring them. And I remember when the Lord blessed me with them. I was in a department store, and they were having, like, the end of the summer clearance. And I said, well, Lord, show me the ones you want me to have. And they were not the style I normally wear, but they were adorable. And I got them, and then I said, now, Lord, I believe I have an outfit to wear with them. And he supplied that, and that's happened so many times. I've got so many clothes stories. Maybe I'll share them with you tomorrow. But for right now, I think we'll uh, wait and put that off until tomorrow. Remember, all day, Jesus is Lord. Your Father loves you, and your Father feeds you and clothes you and gives you the best of everything in Jesus' name.